Are you ready to uncover the truth behind the 30-day 100 push-up challenge? Push-ups renowned for sculpting upper body muscles are taken to the extreme by some including the iconic Saitama from One Punch Man. But what happens when you commit to this challenge? Welcome to Nourish and Thrive, where you nourish all aspects of your life to the best and thrive however you like. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to join our community with thousands of members. Let's get on with the video. Push-ups rank among the most potent exercises for boosting strength and developing upper body muscles such as the chest, shoulders, and triceps. Some individuals embrace an intense approach, committing to performing 100 push-ups daily, showcasing impressive outcomes. Even the character Saitama from One Punch Man adopted this regimen with remarkable success. The challenge involves 100 daily push-ups, but the real question is, what are the consequences of completing 100 push-ups daily for 30 days? Which muscles experience growth? To what extent? And how does strength progress? Are there any noteworthy side effects to anticipate? Post the 30-day mark, what's the aftermath? Does this endeavor truly warrant the investment of time and energy? Our exploration today will delve into these inquiries and more. To begin, in order to optimize your gains and minimize the risk of injury when attempting 100 push-ups daily, it is crucial to ensure correct form. Assuming your form is accurate, what sort of muscle growth can you anticipate from this regimen? To address this, we will examine a 2015 research paper where scientists gauged muscle activity during push-ups. The muscles most activated include the chest, triceps, front shoulders, core, and another known as erratus anterior. These areas are where improvements in size and definition are most likely to occur. Although we will delve into specific details later, I would like to highlight a 2017 study published in the Journal of Exercise and Fitness, showcasing the effectiveness of push-ups. In this study, two groups of untrained subjects were assessed. One exclusively used push-ups in their workouts, while the other group employed a bench press. After 8 weeks, both groups exhibited similar size and strength gains in chest and triceps muscles. This suggests that particularly for beginners, push-ups can be as effective as a bench press. While this may appear promising, it is important to be aware of the potential side effects of doing 100 push-ups daily beginning as early as week 1. According to standards outlined by the Canadian Society for Exercise Physiology, Men classified as moderately fit typically manage around 15 to 20 consecutive push-ups. This suggests that you might need to perform multiple sets of push-ups to reach a total of 100. Especially during the initial days or even the entire first week of the challenge, many may struggle to reach 100 mark due to limited strength. Fortunately, this is when neural adaptations come into play, a phenomenon where your brain enhances its ability to engage or white muscles for the push-off, leading to rapid improvement in push-up strength throughout this week. Additionally, in the first week, the most notable effect is DOMS, or Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness, the tenderness and discomfort experienced in your muscles one to two days post-exercise. Since your body is not accustomed to 100 daily push-ups, you will encounter the highest soreness in your chest, shoulders, and arms during week one. This is entirely normal and should ease by the end of the week. However, if you feel soreness in your traps and lower back, it could signal issues with your form. While soreness typically diminishes by week 2, another side effect starts to emerge, potentially impeding your progress. Let's delve into what you can anticipate during weeks 2 and 3. It might seem paradoxical, but when you work out, you are essentially breaking down muscle not building it. The actual progress of recuperation and muscle growth takes place during periods of rest. In 1997, a group of researchers aimed to establish the duration of this recovery phase. They discovered that muscles continue to recover and develop for as long as 48 hours after exercising. Various studies support this notion suggesting an average recovery time of around 48 hours for muscles. To the context, of attempting 100 push-ups daily, the same muscle groups are being trained in each session, not allowing adequate time for full recovery. 
Consequently, you are likely to experience heightened fatigue during weeks 2 and 3. Your body and muscles may feel more drained than usual, causing a potential decrease in push-up performance. When coupled with upcoming side effects, week 4 could make the pursuit of doing 100 daily push-ups extremely challenging. And, as well discussed later, possibly not even worth the effort. As week 4 approaches, your body will have endured the demanding routine of frequent and high-volume push-ups. Before delving into how much muscle growth you can expect after this week, there are a couple of observations you might make. First, there's the matter of muscle imbalances. Push-ups predominantly target the front pushing muscles, neglecting the back. Consistent training of the front muscles without balancing back muscle training can lead to your stronger front muscles pulling your body forward, causing a hunched posture with rounded shoulders. To counter this, focus on exercises that target the back muscles to maintain upright posture and healthy shoulders. Secondly, you might notice strain in your joints, particularly your wrists and elbows, even when executing proper form. The repetitive motion of push-ups can put significant stress on these joints. While wrists need ample mobility for floor push-ups, they are also burdened by weight, often leading to discomfort. To alleviate this, consider using handles or dumbbells to shift the grip. Similarly, pay attention to the bottom position of your push-up. If your elbows are not directly aligned above your wrist during the push-up, it puts extra strain on your elbow joint. While some stress is acceptable, the high frequency of 100 daily push-ups without allowing joint rest can swiftly lead to elbow discomfort. Congratulations on successfully completing the 30-day challenge! Now, what results and advantages can you anticipate? Is the time and effort invested truly worthwhile? Let's explore the scientific perspective. The initial push-up study I introduced did not involve anywhere near 100 push-ups per day. Instead, participants were assigned three sets of push-ups to failure twice a week. Given their maximum of around 30 consecutive reps, this totaled approximately 180 push-ups weekly. Despite being significantly fewer than a daily goal, participants experienced substantial growth over eight weeks. Their chest muscle thickness increased by 18.3%, roughly 3 millimeters, and triceps growth saw a 9.5% increase, also about 3 millimeters. This growth rate aligns with past studies. With these figures in mind, you can get a rough idea of the potential growth from doing push-ups only twice a week for a month. If you were to attempt 100 push-ups daily, it is reasonable to expect similar or even slightly lower growth due to inadequate recovery time. Additionally, keep in mind that as your body becomes stronger, it will require greater challenges to continue progressing. Basic push-ups won't be sufficient and you may need to incorporate bands or added weight to stimulate further growth. Now, when it comes to assessing the value of this endeavor, I must honestly advise against adopting the standard practice of performing 100 push-ups daily without allowing for rest. This approach leads to numerous recovery challenges and falls short of the necessary progression for sustained results beyond the initial 30 days. However, one advantage is that it instills a habit of regular exercise, serving as a starting point to establish consistency and build momentum. Nevertheless, this routine could be significantly enhanced through a few modifications. By implementing these adjustments, you can achieve even more substantial growth with reduced exertion and lower strain on your body. And that ends our video for today. At Nourish & Thrive, we are grateful for your company on this enlightening journey. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more insights. Thanks for being part of our community. Stay strong and keep thriving. 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 Strong and keep thriving.